ABC. The man at the center of a scandalous ride on the high roller speaks exclusively to 13 Action News. Plus, in tonight's Dirty Dining, see what inspectors uncovered inside a popular hangout. How about a little sewage with your Starbucks? And only on 13 Action News. Help us find these, these criminals that did this brutal attack to my family. A plea as family members fight for their lives after gunmen storm their house. But 13 Action News begins with some breaking news out of the northwest part of the valley where a man has been shot and killed. Police say they have a woman in custody accused of firing the gun. 13 Action News reporter Gina Lazara is there right now with the details. Gina. Stephen Tresha, the house down there with the garage door open is where this happened tonight. Tons of neighbors were outside, all saying the same thing, how shocked they are that a homicide happened in this quiet neighborhood. Police say neighbors called 911 after they heard arguing, followed by a gunshot in the driveway. They say a man in his 30s was killed by a woman in her 50s and that they had been dating for a few years. She indicated that she was the victim of, of a domestic violence situation where uh, she had been struck. Um, and then uh, I, there was not a question whether she was the one who shot him. So the woman has not been arrested just yet because they, they need to figure out if she acted in self-defense. And I did speak to a bunch of neighbors out here tonight. They said they saw that man and the woman quite often walking their dogs in the neighborhood, but they never knew of any issues or fighting that the couple may have had. Reporting live tonight, Gina Lazar, Channel 13 Action News. All right, thank you, Gina. Another breaking story right now. This is Carrie and Lamb. Live video from the scene of a stabbing. It's not clear if any suspects are in custody. The victim suffered non-life-threatening injuries. More breaking news tonight. The armed occupiers at an Oregon wildlife refuge are turning themselves in. Tomorrow morning, the remaining protesters will meet FBI agents at a checkpoint. Today marks 40 days since a group took over that wildlife refuge. Tense moments today at the Luxor Chopper 13. Fast and first over the strip as crews evacuate three floors because of a possible hazmat situation there. Metro says around 11 a.m. housekeeping staff found a suspicious liquid in one of the rooms. Video from inside the Luxor shows just how strict the hotel has been with guests today. Take a look at this video here obtained only by 13 Action News. You can see the walkway where visitors went to enter the front door filled with fire and hazmat crews and plenty of security. Once inside the hotel, more security. That unknown liquid uh, was determined to be non-hazardous. Uh, and as a result of that, the operations of the hotel are returning to normal. Metro and fire rescue crews evacuated the area around 4.30 p.m. It's business as usual at the hotel tonight, though. New tonight, 13 Action News is getting a first look inside a home where a gunman opened fire, critically wounding a man and a teenage girl. Tonight, both are fighting for their lives at UMC, and police say this attack was not random. Mass Society is live right now with the family's plea for justice in an interview you'll see only on 13 Action News. And Massa, how's the family tonight? They're not doing too well, Steve. We spoke at length with the mother who survived this attack with her daughter and fiance in the hospital right now fighting for their lives. She didn't want to go on camera, but she described how the intruder stormed her bedroom, fired dozens of shots. She says, in fact, this was random. Tonight, the entire family is terrified. Brutally shooting, um, didn't, didn't care. They were out to kill. On the other end of their guns, teenager Janine Hinden shot near a main artery. Her mom's new love, Stephen Picardi, riddled with bullets. Tonight, the family speaking out only to Action News, sharing these pictures of the crime to show the brutality of this attack. So much blood we had to blur. We're told the intruders came in the night, two, possibly three. They climbed up the balcony, uh, shot the daughter, blood everywhere. Uh, all her, she was trying to do was um, stop the bleeding. The scene of the shootout, the couple's bedroom, partly visible from Chopper 13, Fast and first over the scene as officers guarded the home. This firearm found in a nearby park. This shotgun at the foot of the balcony. We're told both Stephen and Baby J, as she's known, ran towards the loud noise when they were hit. Baby J tried to fight back. She did. Um, she grabbed the gun. She tried to shoot um, when Stephen was down because um, he just couldn't do it, being shot eight times. The mom who witnessed the terror took cover by a dresser, tells 13 Action News her daughter and fiancé will survive, but he may lose a leg. Tonight, the family's desperate plea to the public. Help us find these, these criminals that did this brutal attack to my family. Um, you know, whatever it takes, we just want them caught. And... 
back out here live. The suspects may have been struck by the bullet from that little girl tonight. That mother, Janine Hinden, tells me detectives are limiting access to these rooms. They're treating this as attempted murder. Reporting live at UMC, Masa Saidi, 13 Action News. Masa, thank you. The man accused of having sex inside a cabin on the high roller is speaking only to 13 Action News tonight. In an exclusive interview, Phil Panzika says he wandered onto the street after a fight with his girlfriend. And that's where he met his partner in crime. I probably should have done that, and I, and I acted pretty childish about it. But we were in Vegas. Well, court documents say Panzika and 21-year-old Chloe Scandorinos went inside one of the high roller cabins by themselves. Security noticed the pair was starting to hook up, so over the intercom, they were asked to put their clothes back on. The high roller employee says the two complied for a few moments, but then went back at it. Panzika is blaming this all on alcohol. Everybody loves a drink, you know what I mean? But people do get out of the right state of mind. People do do the wrong thing. People do things that they wouldn't normally do while they were drinking. And get this, Panzika says his girlfriend paid $3,000 to bail him out of jail. They are not broken up, just trying to work things out now.